And of course, you know, drugs have side effects. They do. And animals don't always feel well. The owners think they might feel well, but they don't necessarily have that great feeling of aliveness about them because they're on drugs all the time. Homeopathy allows the body to stimulate its own immune response, its own, its own ability to heal itself in order for the animal to exist in a state that doesn't require medicine all the time. Some of these animals are, they are condemned to a life of taking pills all the time. Homeopathy gives them the opportunity to get away from that, an opportunity to establish wellness and to get to the bottom of their problems rather than suppress them. Homeopathy, to me, is not the answer to the world's prayers. It doesn't cure everything. It isn't used for everything. But when, it's a, when it does the trick, particularly in chronic disease, the animals that never get better, the allergies, the bowel problems, the thyroid problems, that's where homeopathy plays an enormous role. And the, the, the byword, the, the standby word in homeopathy is wait, W-A-I-T. It takes time, because animals that come to us that have skin diseases very often will take several years to get better. Even if they don't get better and we give them a greater quality of life, that in itself is worth everything. Yeah. I love homeopathy, I must say, and I'm going to be able to go to the other side after my 48 years of professional practice with a smile on my face because of the ability of the things that I've been able to create because of homeopathic medicine that I couldn't do otherwise. And also, I have found with uh, animals, older animals in particular, I give them enzymes, protolytic enzymes, digestive enzymes, because sometimes animals have eaten so poorly and have had so many medications that when you give them enzymes, it assists their own body in liver and pancreas in helping to break down and digest the foods so to get better assimilation. And fiber too, a lot of people don't realize dogs and cats need fiber also. Absolutely, and you know there are 1,300 enzyme systems in the body and they make the body work. And when the enzymes aren't working, the body's not working. And the one thing I think it's important for people to realize that the body is not compart compartmentalized. The body reacts as a unit. When you have an illness, when an animal, your pet, has an illness, every single cell in that body, which has its own microchip, so to speak, its biological microchip, is reacting, is responding. Remember, every cell in your body is a micro you. And as a result, when you're ill, everything is affected, and that's why treating symptoms alone is fallacious, because symptoms are merely the language of disease. It's a healing crisis. That's right. L symptoms are not the disease. But what we do today in our modern medicine, not too much I think, is we suppress the symptoms. We kill the messenger, shoot the messenger, which is trying to say, hey, there's something wrong here. There's a lack of balance in the body and I'm responding and trying to make us well again. Voila, symptoms. Boom, antibiotics and et cetera, et cetera, et cetera. The symptom goes away and everybody's happy, but the cause is still there. In conventional medicine, oftentimes we are giving medication to alleviate pain rather than finding the source of the pain or the cause of the imbalance that causes chronic stress injuries. And the alternative or complementary therapies, uh, including chiropractic, acupuncture, electromagnetic therapy, laser, uh, carefully managed exercise protocols, and uh, also addressing training issues with trainers and riders can make a huge difference in, in eliminating these problems rather than just managing these problems uh, until the animal falls apart. How much activity does a horse need? How much space do they need? The best opportunity for a horse is to be out 24-7. That would be wonderful. But if they can't do that, they should be out at least four to five hours a day outside in a paddock where if they can, they can actually run and uh, not have to stop suddenly. A safe place with good footing where they can uh, run and breathe hard enough to oxygenate well. Most of the time it takes about two, three acres for a horse to get up a full head of steam in a gallop and be able to turn easily and, and uh, do that. But uh, it would be nice if they could all have that. 
How long should a horse or a pony be able to live? Horses live 20 to 25 years in the wild and don't have terribly many problems after they become adults. Our animals oftentimes in domestication don't live that long. Many of them are humanely destroyed because of lameness problems or uh, illnesses and uh, don't often live 20 to 25. It's a disturbing thing. Well kept, however, I have animals in my practice that are over 30 years old that are working doing uh, their job as riding horses and uh, are fine athletes and quite robust. And in fact, I've had a horse live to over 40, two actually in my practice, over 40. So well managed, they can live quite a long time. Genetically, they've got the ability to do that. It's just a matter of how well we manage them. Where is the horse most vulnerable, the injury? Most of the time, the subtle injuries things that happen when animals pull back on lead shanks or when they're handled roughly or when they bump into the back of their stall wall when they're frightened uh, or when they're being medicated or handled or something happens in the way of an accident. These are the most difficult injuries to deal with. They create the imbalances that result in lameness and uh, physiologic problems later on. Dr. Robert Goldstein, how do you go about helping these animals, no matter what the condition? Well, the first thing to do would be to improve their diet. I mean, there are a number of uh, homemade type of diets, raw type of food diets, adding fresh chopped vegetables, whole grains, unpolluted meats to their diet. That's a, certainly the first step. That's an easy step, and, and, and it's an easy step for a person to do at home. Mm -hmm. In addition to that, if they have a specific condition, there are specific remedies that can be added to the dietary program which could either stimulate the immune system or address a specific type of disease. Let's just take one example. We can't go through all of them, but one. Uh, hip dysplasia. Right. Well, hip dysplasia is genetic to begin with. So the animal comes in with the weakened hips and, and a ball and socket that doesn't work to begin with. Then it becomes inflamed on top of that because the animal's beginning to degenerate. So there are things like glucosamine and chondroitin that can stop the inflammation. There are the antioxidant vitamins, vitamin A, vitamin C, vitamin E. These are all antioxidants can help to reduce the inflammation. Uh, there are uh, anti-inflammatories like superoxide dismutase, very, very good about reducing inflammation in the hips. So the end result of adding these things plus a good, healthy, living type of diet can really, really bring this animal around, start the healing process. So let's just summarize. The dogs are getting sick because they're eating a highly processed, adulterated diet that is lowering their immune system. They're over-vaccinated. They have too many toxic flea collars and pesticides around them. They're breathing in. When you have a lowered immune system, then it's just a matter of uh, chance of where they're most vulnerable. It could manifest as a cancer or arthritis or diabetes or kidney disease or skin allergies. The way you help all these conditions is first you change it to a completely healthy organic diet rich in the omega-3 fatty acids, the omega-6 fatty acids like salmon, raw fish, raw chicken, raw meat, eggs, raw dairy. Then the fresh juices, your vegetable juices, um, celery juice, cucumber, ginger, garlic, um, and fruits, watermelon juice with raspberries, strawberries, uh, cranberries, cherries, all very good. Antioxidants, vitamin C, E, A, D, uh, K, uh, all of your primary vitamins, plus calcium, magnesium, zinc, selenium, and the uh, very important antioxidants, green tea, very important, N-acetylcysteine, glutathione, superoxide dismutase, and the bioflavonoid complex. That, plus good, fresh, clean water, will make a big difference. Oh, absolutely. Thank you very much. You're welcome. Arthritis is a very common problem in dogs these days. There are many things that you can do um, to obviate the symptoms of arthritis without resorting to the steroidals and non-steroidal drugs that you would get from your regular veterinarian. You can use some good antioxidants, and by that I mean simply vitamin C, which is given in 10 milligrams per pound, or vitamin E, which is 10 units per pound twice a day. You can use coenzyme Q10 or pycnogenol. Pycnogenol is given at one milligram per pound, and coenzyme Q10 is um, 10 milligrams per 15 pounds. Other things that you can do with the glucosamines and chondroitin sulfates. This is becoming very popular these days, and it does work quite well with some arthritis. Um, another very good um, herb that's used is devil's claw. It works very well for arthritis.
Another good medicine for arthritis is tincture of Ruta. You can give your dog five drops twice a day, and you should see